Hey guys, I'm Nick and in this tutorial we will have a bit of fun with Houdini's hair system and I will show you how to give your character a really stylish haircut. This is not a hair grooming tutorial, this is purely fun simulation and introduction into Houdini's hair generation system. But first of all, I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone who supported this channel by purchasing my project files, liking, commenting my tutorials. That all is possible only because of you guys and your support. If you are new to the channel, well, I am really glad to see you here. And I share everything I learn about 3D design, focusing both on technical side and interesting visual result. I post new tutorials every week, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss new videos. Well, here we are in Houdini, but before that we will need to prepare a few things. You can use Houdini or Blender, Cinema 4D, any software you are comfortable doing that. But basically, what we need, and don't be afraid of this, I will break it down and I'm sure you will understand basically every single step. So before we will need to do this it's a daz 3d character i just cut lower part of his body and then i selected here a few polygons and basically we have separated our hair and our body and i mean not the hair but the part where we will be scattering our hair strands and also we will need a razor this is a really simple razor blade I got from 3D, MDB. Anyways, all these models, textures, all the stuff will be in the project file that is available and link is in the description. Just simple razor blade and it goes like this. So what I've done, I grabbed an edge, like this center edge, turned it to, to, to the spline and made the razor follow that spline. So we have this kind of effect and also I keyframed the rotation of the razor. I've done that in Cinema 4D and let me know in the comments if you would like me to cover all the parts, even this preparation stage in future tutorials, because I think we are more focusing on the effect we are getting done in Houdini. So let's begin setting up our hair. So first of all, you can see that here I have my kind of like mesh that I want to scatter my hair on. And then I moved it down just a little bit, so it's kind of like here. And then I added a convert node, and this is an alembic file. And alembic file is, is not polygon type, so we need to convert that alembic file into the polygon. Then I applied a scale. Basically, this is too large, and I just scaled it. Then I dropped a hair gen node, and what it does, scatters these short hair strands. And basically, here, the only thing that we will change is this density and while you will be creating this don't work with 3000 work with like 100 or 300 scatter seed you can just basically use any number and maybe your randomize point order should be checked and relax iterations you can also play with that it doesn't influence that much the result we are going for then there are guide process nodes and these are basically the simple tools that allow you to kind of like control all the parameters of your hair. So here in this guide process, operation is set to set length. And I basically did this randomize checkbox and set the minimum length and max length. Then I added a bend modifier and we can see that here I set the operation to be bend mode set to be direction constant and the direction is minus Z. So we basically are kind of like grooming our hair into the back side of the head and here angle is set to 123 random angle to 19.5 randomness bias set to 0.7 all these can be adjusted so here you can see how adjusting this angle we are getting different results and randomness is also pretty cool but yeah I want here and the fizz the fizz is not that noticeable, to be honest, but basically what it does, it adds a fizz to our hair, but probably this would be more visible for uh, longer hair. But the important thing here in the hair gen, uh, the segments here, segments basically determine the amount of 
points, the amount of segments and therefore the amount of points in every hair strand. So if I increase, you can see that we are also increasing the smoothness of our hair strands. But we can leave it at seven for this example because uh, yeah, we don't need much more and we will run a vellum post processing with some subdivision. So yeah, don't need that. Then we will need to attach our hair trends to our head. And that's why we are using the group expression node, group name set to pin, group type set to points and back expression. I chosen this one. Uh, let me first point of primitive. And then super important node. And without that, nothing's going to work. We need a convert because convert line basically computes length and the vellum solver now is able to work with these trends. All right, here, let's set up our colliders. First of all, about the body and hair, we have these alembics. By the way, you can import alembic node or you can import the file node. There's no difference. I also put this down and added normals, converted to the polygons and scaled down. And the same thing with the razor. One note that you will need to UVM wrap and then maybe add a UV quick shade to actually visualize your UV map because if you don't do that, your texture when you will be animating that won't stick to the geometry and as the geometry moves in space, the texture will kind of like float back. It's a very weird looking result and we don't want that. Translated, scaled and subdivided looks like this. Then I mer merged my colliders. Here you can see how it looks like. So basically it starts after frame 30 because I wanted to hair kind of like naturally fall down. So I made this gap in 30 frames. And then let's go into our vellum hair. So vellum hair constraints, constraint type set to obviously hair. Mass is set to calculate uniform and density is set to 0.01 and thickness also to calculate uniform. Here, everything is pretty straightforward. We will need to add up our pin group, our like first points of the primitives to pin to animation. Um, after that, in the stretch, stiffness is set to like your maximum stiffness Houdini allows you to set. Damping ratio is set to 0.01. Bend stiffness set to 0.1 damping ratio of the band is set to 0.1 the most important part that allows us to kind of like cut the hair so here i am enabling breaking constraints and breaking them by stretch distance and the threshold in this example is set to 0.01 so if any segment of the hair is stretched more than the threshold the constraint will break and the hair segment will be disconnected. Now in a vellum solver, so let's begin with uh, constraint iterations being set to 300, collision passes set to 50, forces dynamic scale set to 0.5, static threshold set to 1, and then we can go inside the vellum solver and here I have pop drag and air resistance set to 0.4 and the pop fan and pop fan is animated here because I wanted you know that cool effect when there's a hair dryer and kind of blows off all the detached hair strands because some of them falls off naturally but some of them are playing on the flat surface of the head so yeah I just keyframe the wind speed at frame 240 in my case it's zero at frame 255 it's five and 270 it's also zero so it's just a like quick blow off i don't know so here's so that's our vellum solver and then we need to drop our vellum pack vellum pack is used to pack all the vellum data both constraints and geometry and then we can cache it out and here I cached out 360 frames. After the file cache, we will need to unpack our previously packed vellum. So we will need to drop a vellum unpack. Then we will need to drop a vellum post process node because we want to make our hair strands a bit smoother. So let me open that up. 
yeah, here in file cache, you can see at frame 30, it's kind of like, you know, that undercut hairstyle. And basically, yeah, the first 30 frames are so the hairs can fall down naturally. And then we start to like cutting it. Here you can see. And that's our cut hair piece. All right, but we need to make them just a bit smoother. So here, for example, look at these. We can clearly see three or maybe four segments. But yeah, if we apply a vellum post process, now it's all smoothed out. But this will not work because when you get this into an octane, your segments will be disconnected and it will look like a complete mess. Just one node fixes that. It's polypath. Be sure to check connect endpoints and now you are ready to export your simulation. If you prefer to render it out in Houdini, you can skip this step and yeah, just render it here. But I will export all these alembic files, I will export hair sim alembic file and also the razor and human figure and then let's open up cinema 4d and i will show you how i set up the scene all right so it turns out that i have overwritten the that scene basically i've learned the hard way that you never should name your files like scene even if they aren't separated folders but but anyways we will need to set up the scene from scratch and let me show you how it's done so we need our razor, hair sim, and human. Let's drag and drop it here. Okay. Okay. So let's just grab our hair razor, paste it to our hair, and then our human. And let's paste it, copy our human, paste it here so we have everything in one file let's uh, save it scene now it should be in place and uh, all right now let's just quickly set up all the things we need to do so it's Instagram style so it's 1080 by 350 um, then we will need to drop an octane camera we will need a HDRI environment and texture environment. Uh, this one, this one is just a background and this one is HDRI. So here in HDRI, let me choose this photo studio. Yes, we want it in the back. It's free from HDRI heaven. Uh, also, we will need uh, presets. Uh, basically, 1000 samples, 888 diffuse specular scatterer. Let's render it out with an environment and background should be black, should be visible environment so it doesn't conflict with our HDR right here. And uh, yeah, let's check what we've got. That's you now what we need Cinema 4D image texture here because image texture allows us to control the gamma and hdri's gamma should be one so let's open up photo studio and now yeah now much better all right now we need to set up our camera focal length set to 80 i think because just because i love that all right zoom in a little bit all right now for the hair i think we will we will use um, we will use the glossy one. So materials create glossy, and actually, actually, I think I want to create something better that I've done for the for the preview. So here, what we can do, we can grab um, V coordinate. That's basically how you should colorize your hair strands then octane gradient then we can plug the b into our texture here and into the diffuse and maybe 
roughness. I don't know. Point three. Yep, should be should be good. So let me render. So let me set up the materials for our hair. Uh, what rights? What do we need? See for the octane tag. And here hair render as hair, but not as thick. I think point one will work. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think point one will, will work. Let's zoom in a bit. So what do we have here? Yeah, they are. They are good. All right, and now let's apply our material to our hair strands, and you can see that here at the like roots they are they are darker than they are at the like tips. So let's maybe change the color a bit from dark brown to very light yellow yellowish color like this and this one looks good all right here i get some materials from grayscale gorilla and let's use some sort of aged plastic i think it could look good cool yeah like it and here let's use metals some sort of damaged aluminum yeah this one should be damaged aluminum so that's our setup and then i think i just animated the camera to like do this sort of motion you can see here we are actually cutting his hair <laughs> I don't know why, but this is a really weird but funny effect. So let me know in the comments if you like this or not, and what should I cover in future videos. Again, thanks so much for everyone who supports this channel. This all is possible only because of you guys. I will be back very soon. Bye!